imagination or dreaming, we lose the excitement of possibilities. Dreaming, after all, is a form of planning. Michael Jordan. A very good evening to honorable chief guests, Mr. Praveen Parmeshwar, dignitaries, Mr. Madmadan, respected principal, Mrs. Pramila Kannan, the director of brilliant group of institution, Mr. Mohammed Ashraf, teachers, parents, and my dear students. It is my pleasure to be the moderator for today's program. I am Mrs. Rachel Prakash, Head of Commerce at Brilliant Group of Institution. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you. We appreciate you taking time off your busy schedule to join us today, and we hope you will learn a lot. Welcome to the Futuristic Career Guidance Program. May we all rise and let us feel the presence of the Lord Almighty amidst us through a lethargic expression of praise to God. I now call upon Syed Ahmed to recite the Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين Thank you, Syed. Before I start, let me acknowledge the presence of some of our eminent guests. It is my honor to invite the principal of MES Indian School, Mrs. Pramila Kannan, who has an overall experience of 20 years in the field of education as a mentor. She is a visionary leader who is committed to providing the students with the best possible education and ensuring their success in all aspects of life. I invite you, ma'am, onto the dais. Thank you, ma'am. A career is something that you have to do for the rest of your active life. So you definitely want to do something that you like doing and gives you satisfaction. Choosing your career based on your passion will allow you to excel while overcoming challenge with minimum efforts. The right career choice will lead you to much greater heights in terms of happiness and success. And today, we feel honored to have with us the honorable chief guest, Mr. Praveen Parmeshwar, organization development, expert turned entrepreneur, thought leader, policy advocate in career planning, who is the co-founder and the chief executive officer of Lifeology. We invite you, sir, onto the stage. Thank you, sir. Mr. Praveen founded and nurtured his own brand, Lifeology, which aims to empower parents to lead their children to the right education, career, 
and future where they can enjoy happiness, financial security, fulfillment, and purpose. The venture focuses on transforming the guardians from ordinary parents to super parents. And with this, he entered the Guinness World Record for being India's first career ecosystem for parents in January 2018. He pursued, <laughs> he pursued his bachelor's degree in legislative law from the University of Kerala and PGDL from ICFAI. He then moved on to the United Kingdom to get an MBA from Cardiff University, where he won Sir Julian Hodge Prize for the best performance in human resource management. Furthermore, he attended the London School of Economics to receive a certification in strategic management. He is a TEDx speaker, featured in Forbes India, Fortune India, Human Developed Enthusiast, Guide, Life Coach, Columnist, Organization Development Expert, Television Anchor. He is also the proud author of the must-read book, Thinking Beyond the Paradigms, debunking 10 myths in youth, which was published in January 2015 as well. His achievements knows no bounds and has been inspiring him to pave a new path of success. The list of his achievement goes on and on. These were just a few of his achievements. Thank you, sir. I'm profusely elated to take an opportunity to introduce Mr. Mohammad Ashraf, the director of Brilliant Group of Institution, the man of distinct vision, a fountainhead of illuminating ideas, an idol of knowledge, experience, and inspiration to all of us, who has also nurtured thousands of Middle East students to achieve their dream career for two decades in Qatar. I invite you, sir, onto the dais. Thank you, sir. It's my privilege to invite Mr. Manmadan, Administrator of MES Off Campus, onto the stage. <laughs> Education is the past, passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. I call upon the principal of MES Indian School, Mrs. Pramila Kannan, to deliver the welcome speech. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening to one and all present here. It's my privilege to deliver the vote of, I mean, welcome address because already we have completed one session and word of thanks was over, we st are still in that mode. Like from uh, three o'clock we are traveling with, I'm traveling with a short journey with Mr. Praveen Parameshwar, which was very exciting and personally even I am uh, benefited out of it. So I would like to uh, thank at this moment the management of MESIS, the governing board, our president, Mr. Abdul Karim for providing us this wonderful opportunity to gather here and to listen and get benefited out of all his wisdom and knowledge and experience from Mr. Praveen Parameshwar. And I would like to <coughs> welcome Mr. Praveen Parameshwar, the co-founder and the chief executive officer of Lifeology. And I think nobody else can give a better guidance on all the futuristic careers 2020-23 is the program what we have organized today. And I would like to extend the welcome note to uh, the managing director of Brilliant, Mr. Mohammed Ashraf, the person behind this idea of collecting this gathering here. Most of all, the parents, I know the students those who are here are very futuristic. They are very, uh, very much interested in to know what they are going to do. And I also welcome the administrator of MES off-campus, Mr. Manmadan Mambali, for this wonderful day. And the teach parents of different schools, from different schools, from 
classes grade 11 and 12, and also the parents from MESIS of grade 11 and 12, gathered here under the umbrella of Brilliant. Now you are all under the own umbrella called Brilliant. We are here to listen to Mr. Uh, Praveen Parameshwar. So before going into the session, only one thing what I wanted to tell you is the whole scenario, the, the education sector has taken a big paradigm shift in terms of incorporating AI, art integrated program. And know, many of you know that this national education policy is also in place and the national curriculum framework in place. So the whole set has changed, predominantly taken a change after the COVID. So you know what is the reason? Our children proved that they can be independent, they can be decision makers, they can be a sol uh, problem solvers during this, especially this COVID time. So the entire education field started looking at the potential of the students and how to facilitate them or how to enhance their skills and knowledge. So I think we will utilize the uh, good knowledge and experience of Mr. Praveen Parameshwar without taking much time. I welcome all of you once more to this very eminent program. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, ma'am. May I now request the director of Brilliant Group of Institution, Mr. Ashraf, to step forward to say a few words of inspiration. Respected principal, Mr. Praveen, Mr. Manmadan, dear parents and beloved students, a warm good evening to one and all. We have just completed one session for 8, 9 and 10. Now we are going to for the second session, but the audience and the parents are different. Definitely the children in front of me Maybe there will be Elon Musk, future Elon Musk. There may be future Sundar Pichai. So this is an opportunity to find out the passion and aptitude of every child. And we, Brilliant and Lifeology, is giving you a chance to understand how to understand your passion during these two hours. As I told in the last session also, there are two important days in somebody's life. The same thing I'm repeating here. One is the day we all born into this world. The second is, what is the second day? Which is the second most important day in our life? When you die? <laughs> Yes. The second important day in our, your life, in our life is not as per me, as Mark Twain. It is the day when you realize why you were sent to this world. The mission of you in this world. You know, as I told in the last meeting also, if you look at around, there is no similar face. The people who lived in this world and the people who are going to live in this world and those who are living now, has born with a unique fingerprint, with a unique eye. So definitely, the mission of every child in this world is unique. But I go to the class and teach everyone, course 2A, assign 2A. But at the end, we push them to the same field of engineering. So how many of you one day, they may be good engineers, they can be good doctors, they can be good teachers also. You want good teachers also, no? Everybody want to become engineers and doctors. How you'll become engineers without good teachers? So they may be, one of you may be a good teacher. By luckily, I came to the profession of teaching. I was not supposed to be a teacher. The only reason why I came to be, I don't have attended any career guidance. In front, I did not attend any entrance examination. I went through the natural process of completing degree, but still, I'm sure I am enjoying this career what I am doing now. The same way, if you want to enjoy your life, there may be something which is unique in every child. 
the responsibility of the parents and the teachers and the schools will be help them to identify that unique character, help them to nurture that one and try to be successful in that field so that in their later life they will be enjoying their life. So thank you, Mr. Praveen, for being with us and I hope you will enjoy the session. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring words. I now request Mr. Manmadan, administrator of MES Off -camp Campus, to step ahead to say a few words of motivation. Salaam Alaikum. Good evening to all of you. My dear students and parents, respected principal, permission sir, Ashraf sir, and I'm very happy to see all the senior students of the school, all curious students of the school, accompanied by the parents to listen to the specialist in the field of career guidance, Mr. Parameshwaran there. He is simply awesome, because I listened to him. I was there in the previous session. He was addressing to our junior students, students from grade 8, 9, and 10, and the parents. As the moderator said here, a poem where failures, failures and success, stepping stones, where you reach, finally you reach the success in your life. But I think Mr. Parameshwar here, he is taking directly to the success tone in your life. He has a, he has a stuff with him where you listen to him, the methods by which and the track by which you reach the real career pathway where what you intend to reach. MES management through MES off campus plans to expose you to different openings, different possibilities and listening to people, experts like that, like Edu Drive last week, last last week we organized at old campus. So this is much we can do. One thing I want to stress all my senior students that you are at the threshold of moving into the universities, aiming at professional courses. It's not only, the, what, what you have to do, think of that, having to have a complete or total personality. That is, not only academics, but also your non-academic achievements. Because most of the universities are looking at your academics as well as the other side of the personality, whether you are you achieved good you are good at sports music and uh, other literary activities cultural activities if you produce these certificates while you upload your profile there you are you will be the number one so all these things with that i i hope you will enjoy the session with mr parameshwar there you can ask as many questions as possible, get the thing clear to reach the career, right career pathway. Thank you so much. Enjoy the session. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring words. Now, we request our distinguished chief guest, Mr. Praveen Parmeshwar, to address the gathering and to give his precious input to all our dear students who are eagerly seeking for it. Sir, the floor is all yours. Hello. 
Hello. Check, check. Hello. Yeah. Is my o- oh, okay. Is my voice reaching you well? Fine, right? Okay. 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 So as introduced, I'm Praveen, Praveen Parameshwar. And for the next around one and a half hours, one hour, 15 minutes exactly around. So we will be discussing about career. Okay. I, I want to do it as an interaction. First of all, thank you very much for showing up. It's a, such a large crowd, vibrant crowd, pleasant crowd and very pleasant in the evening is something which is very good. And thank you very much for MES, thank you very much Manmadan sir, ma'am, and Ashraf sir for setting this up for all of us. Very glad to meet you here. So when I said it is an interaction, it's gonna be a pure interaction. So I would be taking around half an hour to share some insights with you. From there I look forward to take your questions and answer to the maximum which I can. If I don't know, I will frankly tell you don't know. Okay. Shall we? Okay. First. Okay. I will show you two pictures here. Two pictures. What is the common factor between these two? It's not only really a male image, it's just a representative image for human beings. What is common between these two animals? Yeah. Animals, right? Yeah. What's the common factor between these two animals? There is something common between these two images. What is that? Strength. Strength. Yeah. To an extent. Something more. Again, more similar. They want to survive. That's a good point. They, they are strong. They want to survive. What more? Focus. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, ma'am. Come on. Yeah. Huh? They are both a part of animal kingdom. That's right. Both can hunt. Both a bit wild, right? Both can hunt. Yeah. Both are alone. Ah, both are alone. That's right. Yes, sir. Huh? Target. Yeah, they target and they get it. They focus. Okay. They are in search of something. It's a career guidance class, so that is more resonating, right? They are in search of something. Okay. Now, I'll come back to this slide. Okay. What is common among these six images. There is a common thread with these six, connecting all these six images. Huh? Non? Non-living things. Ah, that's one, not wrong. Yeah, that's one, but something more. Sorry? They are all made to make our life easier. That's a nice point. Then, what more? Uh huh. All of them are used by humans. Okay, that's right. Not wrong, that's right. Then, what more? All are made by? All are made by humans. Okay. They are made for comfort. They are made for making life easier. They are made for comfort. And now I would say, try to connect these two slides. The common factor between these two images act as the basic thing or the fundamental for the commonality between these, these six. I think you would be able to connect. Sir should be able to connect. The common factor between the other two images act as the basic of the commonality 
among these six, these six images? They have? Life and technology. Let me tell you. It's, you, you both were almost close. Okay. How many hours a lion sleeps in a day? Zero hours? A lion sleeps for around 20 hours a day. 20 hours. A male lion. <clears throat> and a female lion sleeps for almost 16 to 18 hours a day. They wake up, the male lions, they wake up, go, hunt, get food, eat, sleep. In fact, on a weekend morning, you don't have anything to do, no tuitions, no classes, no homeworks, no deadlines, no exams, and nobody at home. Relax. What will you do? People who are working now, so on a weekend, this is applicable for you also, what you will do? Naturally, this is the position we want to be, right? Correct? This, this is the position we all want to be, but as we are not getting an opportunity to do that, and the system, the ecosystem, the world is forcing us to be productive, we are trying to be productive, right? Given an opportunity, we also want to be on bed for 20 hours like a lion, and when we are hungry, go take some food, have it, come back to the bed and go out and do something we want to do and come back and sleep. Am I right or not? So precisely, these two animals are lazy. Lazy. They're lazy. We are. Right? And every innovation in the world, or most of the innovation in the world, is in fact taking the leverage of our innate interest to be lazy say an escalator or a train or a robot cleaner so we are not even ready to type now we need we give the always command right and the younger generation like the youngest ones right you know the ones into the uh, the 10 years eight years five years they're better to give always command than your generation or our generation right so always command or oh, like early we had some hard kind of chairs and now it is into this whereas you can sleep and you can lie down you can sleep and you can be at comfort and the core the core market marketing proposition of starbucks itself is be there be lazy if you want to work work if you want to read read if you want to sleep sleep have a coffee as long as you want to be there be there so naturally the, and and this particular thing is kind of supported by the evolutionary biology as well because there was a recent study published by Howard. The longest standing species in the world is Homo erectus, right? I mean the in the in the in, in the homo in the homo aspects. They survived in the world for more than 1.2 billion years. Sorry, 1.2 sorry, 1.2 million years. Their biggest and the most important character is lazy if we take our life many years back who were we we were kind of hunter gatherers right we were kind of doing sleeping wherever we wanted to sleep living with whoever we wanted to leave and traveling wherever we wanted to go eating whenever we wanted to eat it was not a, it was a very unstructured anarchical kind of life correct why do I say this? Because of two reasons. Students or professionals, <clears throat> we all still have the instinct to be lazy. We all have the tendency to be lazy. And we all have the genetical code inside ourselves to be lazy. So our innate tendency is to be lazy that's our innate tendency park this point there 
we will revisit this point in a while, park this point here. <coughs> Can I get the other slide? So, you park the point, right? And now, now let us visit. Now let us visit where exactly the world of work is moving towards. Okay, where exactly the world of work is moving towards. This is a poem about job skills and employment. Who can read it for all of us? Anybody come forward and read it for all of us. Anybody come quick, quick, quick. Somebody come forward quick and read it for all of us. This is what I said, right? We always have in the, the, the inertia to move. Yeah. And the older we become, we, the inertia will be higher. Because in the last batch of 8, 9, 10, we had 3, 4 people coming from somewhere. Are you want, ma'am? Come. Oh, I am taking my word back. It's like older, you're not becoming lazier. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go. Mike. Good evening, everyone. Rise up, young ones. It's time to take the reins to fight against the odds and break the chains. The future's pride and the world's at your stage. With determination, you can turn the page. The unemployment that pledges our land is just a challenge that you must withstand. A chance to prove your strength, your skills, your might, and show the world that you are ready to ignite. Start small, work hard, and never give up. You will find the path to successes. Don't let it interrupt. Be creative, be innovative, be bold, and watch your dreams unfold. The world needs you, your ideas, and your zeal to bring new life, new hope, and a brighter future real. So take the first step and keep moving ahead. You will be and you will find success, happiness, and a brighter day ahead. Wow, a big round of applause. Thank you, you ma'am. You, you, you gave life to the poem. Thank you very much. Thank you. To write a poem like this, it takes some deeper thinking, right? We need to understand about skills, life, skills, employment, and all. Put it into words edit multiple times and reach to this level of perfection. Correct? It's an average fine poem, right? Not bad. But the point is, I took hardly 32 seconds to generate this poem using ChatGPT. Just 32 seconds. So, to write poems or stories, articles, media write-ups, it's getting influenced by technology in a larger manner. What will be the future of work for people in literature and in media? This is a company called Iva Technologies. If you search in YouTube and listen to their music, you can listen to music which is produced by technology. And extend this you give a prompt like this. Suppose, I want to produce a tune or a music suitable for a Gen Z person living in this part of the world, in Middle East, in Qatar, educated in an Indian school, following an Indian curriculum, enjoying melodious music, but wants to listen to melodious music for getting motivated every day before going to school. It generate a music suitable for that within seconds. Where exactly the future of work in the creative world is going to us? Yeah, play. 
and this is the music what you're going to listen now is the music generated by AI you have it to play let him pull not a problem okay and now these pictures there is a platform called party P A R T I owned by Google as a research project the prompt given to this platform is an oil painting of two rabbits in the style of American Gothic wearing the same clothes as in the original and in less than two minutes this was produced graphic design animation modeling this is the direction which the career is moving towards the future of work is moving towards People used to spend multiple days to come up with an animated picture of this depth and perfection, right? Which is possible to be done now in minutes. What's a common factor among these faces? They are all smiling, yes, of course. What more? What's common with these people? Who spotted that? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody from there also mentioned it, right? The common factor among these pictures is none of these big people exist in the world. They never existed, they will not exist. Because these are fake faces generated by a computer technology. This is a poster Lifeology created when CBSC results were out to congratulate the winners, posted on our social media and got considerably good amount of reach. Students on this picture are not from any school in the world because they never exist. We used a platform called Mid Journey to create these pictures by giving a prompt, something like, we want to generate a picture of Indian students, male and female, wearing a professional high school uniform and happy after hearing the results. And this picture was generated in minutes. Before that, we had to, to get a picture like this we had to go for a website like Image Bazaar, which is selling pictures for 8,000 rupees, Indian rupees for one picture. But this created, this was created in less than two minutes. So, literature, music, design, animation, graphics. What is special with this house? Easily spot. What is special with this? Of course, it is not created by AI. What is, it is real. It's 3D printed, right? So it's, this is the first 3D printed house inhabited by human beings. And this is a Netherlands couple who lives in this house. It's not only in Netherlands. This is a house created by a small startup incubated within Madras IIT, the Chennai IIT. The 3D printing is revolutionizing manufacturing engineering, construction, one area. So, civil engineers, architects, technicians will be facing, I don't say challenge, but a very exciting and thrilling future because they will have to work along with the technology of 3D printing. Not only that, these three people you identify, real people. Who are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He spotted. Who is that? That one. I mean, this, the kiddo there. Yeah. Who is that? Cosmic Adventure. Mr. Cosmic Adventure. You look at your chest. It is written there. Your Cosmic Adventure. Yeah. Say, who you spotted from these three? Name. Any names? You got any names? No, okay. But you, you had some, fam you have, some of these faces are familiar, right? 
some is familiar no he will he will spot next time yeah who are these people jeff bezos of amazon the founder of amazon lori page the co-founder of google and lori ellison the founder of oracle these people have invested all these three billionaires have invested in one industry other than it and ai no ai no it but they have invested millions of dollars in this particular industry which is that uh, not space not space education no not, not education i think they all are having csr projects in education but million dollar investment in million dollars of investment in something else it is life science life science and you know what they are studying in life science we like it or not ethically right or not they believe death is a disease which can be prevented by the right intervention and they are researching to prevent death at least to extend longevity right or wrong is a different question altogether but this is the direction which life science is going towards very exciting researches are happening in the field of molecular biology in the field of uh, like you know genetics a lot of interesting researches are happening and now This is a device which won the very famous tricorder prize competition happened in Silicon Valley. The machine which can diagnose multiple health conditions for a person by self including couple of cancers. Also similar machines like that. Medical science is one area where a lot of research is happening. maybe in future when you go to a hospital you will be you will be met by a kiosk first which will ask you questions all the questions which doctors are asking now to you like when did it start where you have pain what do you ate are there anybody in the family suffering from the same is there any family history the same questions what the doctors are asking now will be asked to you by a machine or a kiosk and based on your answer a detector indict and come up with their primary diagnosis and then suggest you to go for a diagnostic test like a scan or x-ray or similar like that or a blood test which is primarily understanding the deviation or differentiation you have the you have from the base pattern of things which is supposed to be right based on these two understanding the machine may create the primary diagnosis and then only you may go and meet meet a doctor so the doctor's role need to be beyond what they are doing now in the primary level so even the expectation from a medical student or a medical graduate will go higher on the go lawyers this is the interface of a platform called west law edge owned by reuters you upload the facts of a case to this particular platform it go across the country understand the nuances of the law related to the facts of the case and it will give you a printable version of every legal point related to the case with a potential for and against argument and also the possibility of outcome estonia is a very small negligibly sized country which appointed not only an ai lawyer but an ai judge 3 years back and estonia is talking to the world that this is the only way to reduce the piling up cases in the world law is another field so the problem there is 90% of the lawyers in the world in any country are earning not by arguing cases at the court but by doing legal research and preparing legal documents which will automatically be taken over by companies like this we all know that the technology or the it is getting highly automated when chat gpt come into picture so the google already you know 
on the public platform they acknowledge that the chat chat gpt is having tech understanding equivalent to their entry level engineers so the no code law code kind of softwares are getting very very popular so the point here is it's going to be a new world with a new changes and a new approach where according to the oxford study 47% of jobs as of today will not even exist in another 20 years which they said in 2013 now it is 2023 and the longevity of the, the the study is predicting that these will be down in another 10 years so this is the kind of changes i'm not saying that humans are going to be totally replaced by machines but one thing is sure very very deeper changes are happening in the world of career and now on one side now i want you to revisit the first point we made we are kind of lazy aloof easy going animals on the other side lot of technology changes are happening in the world and the expectation of industry from a potential employee is or even from potential entrepreneurs is way higher than what it is now today just because you have some connections or some contacts or some references you may get into a company because job is there which may not be the case when you complete your undergraduate or post graduation and come out of your college these two things you need to connect so what is the point here if we continuously follow our innate tendency to be lazy we will not be finding the right place in the world of career on the go it may be possible to an extent even now but that may not be the case on the go so the point is we need to go way beyond than what our natural tendency is we need to put a great effort to identify the most suitable careers you know what is important in identifying the most suitable career it is simply because when you identify a career which is very suitable for you naturally we will become less lazier right we become less lazier more active more dynamic we will be more proactive learn more and become more and more relevant in the future you at least some of you might have read the book sapiens right who wrote the book sapiens by professor yuval noah harari right so it's professor yuval noah harari is one of the speeches he was saying the biggest problem human beings are going to face in the future is to be stay relevant we will be facing very tough a tough time to stay relevant in the world why we should exist kind of relevance so here let me connect let me ask you to connect these three points naturally we are kind of lazy on the other side industry is moving in an extra pace with technology it is important to and the third point only if we identify the most suitable place for ourselves in career we will take an extra step forward to be relevant in future so i suggest to you all who are into 11 and 12 now so important to take that extra step in career planning to identify your most suitable place because you need to be in a place taking from what ashraf sir was saying before you need to be in a at a place where you really find a why to be there is a very famous saying by a person called frederick nietzsche a philosopher and the nietzsche statement is he who has a why to live can bear with any how in his life the house can be managed if you have a why to leave only if you are getting into a career of your inner calling you will get that why with yourself 
And once you get that why, naturally we will stay relevant. And here comes the point, what are the factors I should keep in mind to identify the most suitable career? How can we plan for the most suitable career? I'll take another slide, I think, to give you some more understanding. Everything we told till now is fine, right? Yeah, wait, the other slide. See, <laughs> we told about why, we talked about choosing the right career and all, right? But you know, the problem is, this is how we choose career now. Compare between the effort you take to plan an European trip or a foreign trip versus the effort we take to plan career, for which one we research more. We go to every website, we take the reviews, we talk to people, we listen to the vloggers, we listen to the travelers, we understand everything about the country, even before paying maybe a small amount of money for a trip. But for a lifetime decision, we just take a decision based on what my friends are taking, my neighbors are taking, my parents are seeing, the society is going, the advertisements are talking about, we just give a blind shot. And this is where entire thing falls down. So what is the solution here? The solution here is you need to find a career where all the three factors blends together. Which are those three factors? Your passion, your aptitude, and the opportunities around in the world. It is very important that we do a deeper analysis of ourselves and try to identify what I am passionate about. Second, what my aptitude is towards. Third, for what sort of careers we have opportunities around. If we can find a career where all the three blends together, so there comes the most suitable career for ourselves. And if we are at that particular place, if we are at that particular place, we will find the why, we will find the purpose, we will go the extra mile, we will withstand the natural tendency to be lazy, and we will stay relevant whatever happens in the world of technology. Hope you're getting the point. And now comes the operational, the application part. How to identify passion. Next slide. Other slide, please. How to identify passion. How many of you are passionate about something? How many of you, the students here, are really passionate about something? I've found my why. This is what my inner calling is. I'm going to do that. Whether you do it or not is a different matter. But you have the tendency to do that. So how many of you have a passion within yourself? Okay, one. What you're passionate about? What's your passion? If you don't mind to say. Space, okay, space science, growing field, good number of opportunities, nice one. Then, anybody else? Passion, yeah, what are you passionate about? Visual art, you are passionate about, great, wonderful, what more? Yeah, microbiology, okay, good. Some people, like you three, realize their passion easily. Because naturally it comes to them. There is a second group of people. Yeah. Yeah. There is a second group of people who needs to put an extra effort to identify passion. And there is a third group of people, even after that extra effort, we will identify that we are not passionate about anything. That's perfectly fine. No, that's perfectly fine. Because being not passionate about anything is perfectly fine. Not necessary that we need to be passionate about everything. There comes the problem. 
If we always think that we need to be passionate about something and not passionate about anything, we feel disappointed and we feel that something is wrong with us. No. It is absolutely fair and fine to be not passionate about anything. That is a third category. The first category you already identified your passion. And there comes a second category to who I want to give a process to discover your passion. This is who the second category. Paka? First, know about certain careers around which are really emerging. Know about the careers around. You can take a pen and a paper and list down the top careers you think which are emerging around. You can rely upon data from any platform like Lifeology or anything else to understand which all careers are really emerging. After listing down the 30 careers, now you need to think. See, it's not going to happen in one day. It takes time, okay? Because you're taking a life decision. There are only two decisions in life, most important decisions in life, which are going to decide whether you are going to live a happy life or not. One, who you are going to live with, your marriage. Second, which job you are going to do. If these two decisions are taken wisely, life will be happier. If these two decisions are ha taken in a wrong way, hell. So, you, you, are, you are taking a very important decision. So don't think that you can take this decision in one night or in one week or sometimes maybe in a month, okay? So once you list these 30 careers, you need to think deeply. Suppose you, some of you are in commerce, some of you are into science, some of you are into computers, some are into bio, so some may want to get into something in maths. So list down the potential opportunities for all this. And then think in which one you can work for 12 to 15 hours a day, five days a week, for 10 years to the minimum, without getting bored. Naturally, from 10 or 30 you list down, you will end up with two or three. You will end up with two or three. And then what you should do is, visit those workplaces, or talk to people doing that, or, re or search in internet about what is happening in that career cross check and then naturally you will find whether you are passionate about that or not if you're if you find the passion you move to the number one type of people if you're not finding passionate about anything you go to the third category that's also fairly fine but here you identify what your passion is so what you got out of the three you got your passion right and now these are some of the top growing careers in the world. Okay? You can take a picture if you want. And more careers I will show on the go also. And now, so pick some of these careers as per your interest and explore more and see whether you are passionate on that or not. And now, the second part, how to discover aptitude. This is easier. Easier. Why do I say easier? Because there are set systems and patterns and tools for this. Of course, being a company, Lifeology has it, and other companies have things. So you need to rely upon a very professional assessment, career assessment, possibly powered by AI, to identify your aptitude. Let me tell you, only with an assessment or only with aptitude or only relying upon aptitude, you will not reach upon the right career. But out of the three key factors, aptitude is one very important factor which can help you to choose your career. So rely upon a company, maybe like Lifeology or anything else, where we do a Lifeology career intelligence test or any other company as well, like MBTI, Myers and Briggs Syndicator, or any other company, to identify your aptitude. So what happens? Now you have your passion listed. You have the set of com careers which are in sync with your aptitude. Got it? And now what you need? You need to identify where opportunity lies. 
in which career there are opportunities available in the world so i will tell you that also of course you need to do more research what i'm going to present here is a proper data based analysis report of the opportunity of career based on the data currently available if you are a bio lover and here comes the uh, graph x axis opportunity that means if the career is providing more opportunity it comes over here and this y axis is for earning got it for bio lovers of course it is for mbbs or something i didn't include here but i, I, I think sir suggested before it is about the bds or dental but it's about the medicine studies and these people may not be always client facing people they may be doing researches they may be running companies recently i got in touch with a person or i got introduced to a person when we together travel to us for a trip uh, to explore some business opportunities there he is a cancer surgeon worked in the uk in a hospital as a cancer surgeon now back to india and started a company a startup in biobanking is preserving the tumors and trying to get inferences out of it the two tumors which are chopped out of human bodies and preserving it and trying to get the inference out of it and sharing with the pharma companies for their researches that's also an opportunity for a doctor there are doctors when ashok sir and i was they were discussing about the opportunity for doctors there are doctors who work with insurance companies a lot still even today even though many times parents are criticized for encouraging people to take doctor or mbbs or kind of bds courses even today that is one course or one field with more opportunity as well as high potential of income followed by veterinary the animal sciences almost equal opportunity and slightly lower in income but it's a choice it's not that celebrated a career is not a very celebrated career but if you do have an interest it has opportunity as well as earning potential agriculture studies not that you are going to be a farmer that is also a good job but it may be about agriculture planning agriculture research agricultural policy making agricultural product development nursing pharmacy physiotherapy pharmacy as is the passport to your success we undertake coaching for regular and repeat batches and tuition for board examinations brilliant education center doha qatar good morning good morning what's all this the results course whereas you work as a pharmacist here where opportunities are more but in income wise it is lesser than pharmacy research but to do to become a pharmacy researcher you have to go through an intense hello hello yeah thank you to become a pharmacy researcher you have to go for a rigorous intense education process you will have to complete a farm d a five year course like you know like in a doctor of pharmacy or you will have to complete a b farm m farm and then maybe into a research career to be here pharmacy research interesting career lot of opportunities in every countries geography agnostic because uh, i would say maybe geography agnostic even than doctors so geography agnostic country agnostic but you have to go through a rigorous study than being just a pharmacist and then genetics and astrobiology very interesting career option for bio lovers high income potential high reputation very challenging job growing field but it's not a mass employment field it's a niche employment field every year a couple of 10000 opportunities will be available around it's not gonna be in millions 
So if you want to get a career in this, you have to ensure that you are doing that good in academics from the best of the best colleges, which is very important. The profile of the colleges can be compromised when you are doing a course here because opportunity is more. But here opportunity is less. So these recruiters will go only to the top-notch colleges and recruit from there. That's a problem. This is for the bio lovers. But if you are a number, math lover, or a tech lover, things goes like this. Still engineering, computer science, or electronics, or electrical, or AI and data is on the top. You see the blockchain here, which is a buzzword nowadays, right? Everywhere blockchain is a buzzword. It's not going to create millions of opportunities. It's a very specialist field, but highly paying field. Earning potential will be very high, but will continue as a niche field as we know today. So if you want to get into blockchain, you need to be very clear that you are that passionate to be there. And your aptitude, your mathematical, numerical intelligence is that good to be there. Because it's not going to be the job of an entry-level computer, soft, computer software programmer. It's going to be way beyond that. And you see the data analyst and data scientist here, two career opportunities which are very, very good for number lovers. But data analysis is using some software models and techniques. They analyze the data in front. A lot of opportunities nowadays, but maybe on the go, the number of opportunities may decrease. Because this is one area where computer science is coming up with interpretation softwares in a big time, analysis programs in a big time. So it, people may be replaced on the go, or number of opportunities for people may come down. But data scientists are people who even create those models, create those systems, create those approaches. There the problem is, opportunities will be lesser, but payment would be higher. If you want to be into the banking industry or investment industry, so don't think that the opportunities for bankers will continuously grow. It is a dying field. Because much part of banking is being taken care of by softwares now. That's why inside the bank, the former bankers are now the salespeople. Formerly, the managers at banks were doing more banking and less sales, but it is reversed now. They do more sales and less banking because banking has been taken by care by the systems. But investment bankers, investment advisors, wealth managers who are using data science in the best of the best manner to identify the right investment opportunity for other people they will be having better opportunities on the go. Chartered accountancy. Good comes over here, but the authority of a chartered accountant, now the glamour of chartered accountancy, ACCA or CA qualified people, are the, is the authority they have to sign, to verify, to acknowledge things, right? Maybe in another a couple of years, not a couple of years, maybe another 10 to 15 years, authority of these people may come down. Because more transactions will happen over the blockchain, whereas the possibility of manipulation will be very less. So when the possibility of manipulation is very less, what is the value of getting authenticated by somebody else when the system itself is authenticating the same? But still, they can be converted into their, their, their acumen into investment and wealth management things. Actuarial sciences, the ones who are working very, very closely with the investment groups, they are the ones who fix how many real is going to be the next year's EMI or the next year's you know, premium for your insurance policy. So they fix based on multiple level of data and they are certified people. You need to complete an examination to be a certified actuary. Moving forward, if you are a machine lover, still tech, machine lover, here it goes. Mechanical, electrical, robotic engineering, 
good opportunity fancy course aeronautical engineering good paying things least opportunity because putting together there would be less than 1000 employers around the world for aeronautical engineers and they are hiring more electrical engineers or automobile engineers or mechanical engineers to this profession so specifically aeronautical engineers will be hired only very less but if you get hired you study from the top notch colleges you get hired then the payment is very high extremely high and here goes the 3d printing electric vehicle sustainable energy kind of professionals for the machine lovers if you are a business or commerce lover so what we said now was if you are into a bio field if you are into a tech or computer field and now if you are into a commerce field here goes the opportunities naturally the progression of a commerce student is gonna be either to a business study field or to a kind of a bcom or mcom kind of a field or to a certified accountant or a company secretary kind of a field this is a natural transition right and of course the same people can get into the the ca or acc or wealth management as presented for the number lovers but here it is more for the commerce if you are a commerce lover and not in the commerce stream but into the science stream in plus 2 you can choose your btech and then your mba because btech and mba still has value in the market and it is growing why because they understand the language of business and they understand the language of technology but if you are a commerce student in plus 2 naturally your option can be bcom or ba economics and then mba i won't suggest a bba and then mba so why because the same thing you will study continuously for five years three years in bcom bba and two years in mba or in uk one year in mba but if you study economics or you study psychology you already study uh, bcom you learn something more a new thing and then progress to the business studies getting the point and these are the certifications here if you go for an MBA track aim at special understand about these this, this graph when you choose your specialization sales a lot of opportunities high earning potential of course highly stressed followed by marketing need a bit of creativity data understanding and marketing is not only gonna be advertising game on the go it's gonna be a data game it's already a data game you should be a number lover so usually people going into marketing were creative people but now if you need to sustain well in marketing you need to be a data guy as well because you need to analyze micro analyze and understand the power or the impact each advertisement is creating around the world and even each color is creating in the world have you noticed the color of the global brands why mcdonald's is red in color why kfc is red in color why coca cola brand is red in color red in color on the other side why microsoft is blue in color why linkedin is having a blue logo why facebook is having a blue logo why pepsi is blue when coke is red have you thought about that if you take the brand colors 90 percent of the brand now you travel back you see the brand boards 90 percent of the brand colors would either be on the red spectrum or the blue spectrum very less in yellow spectrum as well and mcd has both you know why the impact of different colors in the mind of people is different another example take rolex rolex watch or rado watch their website check jaguar's website check the website of aston martin what's the color is it red blue 
why 99 percentage of suits in the world are black in color why why the website of rado why the website of jaguar why the website of monbla is black in color because these colors evoke different feelings in the mind so service companies adopt more blue color because it evokes trust in the mind of people when they see red evoke attraction black is equivalent to luxury so these are the feelings which different color evokes in the mind of people a marketing guy should understand when they take a particular color for a logo what is the percentage of change happening in sales so he should be a data guy as well so this is for the business people art lovers graphic design animation still have opportunities still have opportunities but they should understand how to use the right tools the ai powered tools as well augmented reality is a wonderful career but as it is an industry which needs a lot of investment and too much of uh, you know capital to be there the opportunities are not going to be in millions but in a couple of thousands at 10000s less opportunity but people who master that technology master that would be earning a lot vfx the visual artist is here right yeah the vfx is here product design is here see why this particular bottle is having this shape the designer says it's on reason right so if you see many people are wearing spectacles many people wear spectacle here right and we choose not only we, when we when we go for a frame we are not only choosing based on convenience we are also choosing based on design right who designs it the product designers designs it not the graphic designer so which is a more paying career than a graphic designer but less in opportunities architecture so these are some of the careers which are very important and very interesting for art lovers if you are a humanitarian or social lover people who are in the public health public policy will be having a lot of opportunities on the go so one of the top selling courses with oxford university is master of Pub masters in public policy one of the top selling courses in harvard is masters in public health counselors social work and rural development you might be you might be knowing about institute like tata institute of social sciences in mumbai asim premji university in mumbai irma institute of rural management so these institute from these institutes you know who the recruiters are not only the ngos microsoft google hp these corporates recruit their hr managers marketing staffs market researchers policy people from these humanitarian institutes some of the top institutes in humanities courses and liberal arts courses in india if i say also in the uk if i say are charging way more than what has been charged by medical colleges it's a very hyper growth growing field and this is how exactly the opportunities are plotted so the point here is now what you have listened from me is six points number 1 innately we are bit lazy number 2 but the world is changing in a very rapid manner which demands an extra mile from ourselves number 3 only if we are at the right place where our passion and and aptitude and opportunities blends together we will be able to take that extra leap and be stay relevant in the world number 4 if the passion naturally comes to you it is fine otherwise you have to follow the process which i presented to identify the right passion 
Sometimes you can do by your own. Sometimes you need to take a professional mentor's help to do that. Number four, it's very good if you can identify your aptitude as early as possible and see what is your fitment in that career. Even if the aptitude is not fit, you don't need to leave your dream, but you can understand you need to put extra effort to perform in that particular career. And number six, we also talked about the amount of opportunities around the, in the world on different careers. Now what I suggest is, you put your thoughts on passion, aptitude and opportunities, try to map it by yourself or with the help of your parents or teachers or a professional career mentor or career coach and create a plan forward. Because you have one year or two year max with you to take one of the two major important decisions in your life. Early, the better. Thank you very much. Questions? <laughs> Questions, please. Any question you can ask? If I know, I will tell. If I don't know, I will say no. Yeah. Give me a minute. I think microphone. Yeah, I heard the question, but for all. Um, what's the scope for my uh, culinary arts yeah. in the future? Thank you. That's a good question. See, culinary arts, if I plot it in, I don't have a number with me or data with me, but I assume from experience, culinary arts is one career which is having, which is having two levels. Number one, the base level of culinary arts jobs are having a lot of opportunities, very less pay. But there is a super type of a job for culinary arts. Opportunities would be very less, but payment would be higher. If you, if you are super passionate and your aptitude is into that and to learn it from the best of the best coaches or chefs around the world or you do it by yourself and learn, if you can have an extra edge in that, you get placed to the level where less opportunities and high income. Got it. It's like the pharmacy research. But if you are not that good in that, but getting into that just for getting a job, then you would not, you would be getting the job in the lower band of salary, but more number of opportunities. Got it. The example you can correlate from the slide is the pharmacy and pharmacy research. Got it? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Uh, what is the scope for corporate law and uh, international law in today's scenario? Yeah. Again, I would say uh, less in number of opportunities, but more in salary, if you can crack it. Why? Because people who complete international laws or corporate laws, corporate law, uh, Basically, I studied law for my undergraduate five years. So people who work in corporate law or international law, mostly the clients would be companies. And they would be giving their cases either to one or two lawyers inside the company who work in the department, but even a huge corporate would be having how many lawyers inside. It can be counted with your fingers, right? Or they would be giving those cases to top-notch law firms. So the recruiters for people into corporate and international law is not too much of a number. And if they want to practice by it on and build a firm, it takes years, sometimes decades. So naturally the opportunity is to work with a corporate law firm which the number is not that high. That is one thing. 
But if a person is that passionate about it, it is fine. But this is one challenge. Second challenge is, law as a career has a lot of geographical limitations. That means, you study law from a particular country, you may not be able to practice in another country before you go through a process. In some countries, even after going through the process, you can't go to the court and practice. So you need to be very clear in which part of the world the child is going to settle and grow the career forward. And then need to study the law which is acceptable in that territory. That is a generic limitation for every law courses, but for corporate and for international law, the problem is that. It can fall somewhere like, you know, lesser in opportunities, but once you're getting in, high paid. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry? It's the English law which they follow, right? For example, in corporate world, it is the English law which they follow. It is the English? English law which they follow, for example, no? Huh. Yeah. It's but still, it's like in which country you practice. Okay. For example, you... You study law in the UK, for example. That doesn't mean that with an UK law degree, you can go to anywhere in the world and practice. Not necessary. Got it. But still to work in a corporate law firm, it may be okay to work as a desk job lawyer. But if you want to go to the court, you need to be qualified from the country or and law which is approved in the country a law, law system which is approved in the country so there you need to dig deeper which country it is got it yeah yeah from the back okay the back there. two people there somebody raise hands from here also right yeah i'll come to that yeah. What is the career opportunity in forensic science and medical science? If we compare both forensic science and medical science. Uh, sir, I would say you, when you say forensic science, you are focusing on f doctors as forensic science expert or BSc forensic science, MSc forensic science kind of a type? MSc doctor forensic science. Ah, okay. So there the point is forensic science is another career which is paid average, opportunities also average. Because who is going to appoint a forensic science expert? Sometimes the government police systems. Second, the laboratories. Third, the private investigation systems. But how many opportunities are going to open there? It's a very fashionable course. Very interesting course, thrilling course, exciting course from outside. But the number of opportunities are, is limited. So, if a person is that passionate and interested in chemistry and biology, almost equal, and ready to work in a research-oriented field, and dig and has a very good research acumen. Forensic science is a very good area to explore. But keep in mind, you will have to complete your education from the top of the colleges because opportunities are not going to be in abundance. Comparing with medical science, naturally medical science doctor, medic people who complete their medical science would be having more, maybe 10 or 20 times more opportunities than what a forensic science expert will be having. But if you like the profession, it's a good profession to enjoy. But the, to the students, I would say, don't get into forensic science considering that or, or getting carried away by the Sherlock Holmes kind of stories. Because it is more chemistry and, f chemistry and biology involved than the case analysis. Is. That's my answer to that. Sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, how about... Uh courses in uh, humanities, geography, uh, environment, and uh, history. Yeah. Courses in environmental science is good. Having opportunities, that is again, it is not in abundance. 
but there are opportunities almost connected with geography as well but i would say geography being a generic subject can be taken for under graduation and moving to post graduation the person can focus any one part of geography maybe environment can be one or sustainability can be another it's a climate sciences can be another but for getting into climate sciences you need a science background as well so the point is it is having opportunities but take history history is a particular stream in arts or humanities which is not directly connected with employment but understanding of history will help us to execute multiple jobs example i love because what is history we studied about what has happened in the world correct which is having straight correlation with what is going to happen in the world so a person who understand history deeper can be a better market researcher than just a person who complete bba mba and become a market researcher a person who understand history and also understand design aspects or design tools may be able to be a better designer than only understand than becoming a designer only by understanding the tools because by learning history you are learning how people responded to the world and when you design something you are supposed to understand how people are going to respond to this design so if you can learn history and get the acumen developed by learning history and the understanding of history into some jobs that would be perfect and good but directly converting history into a job may be a bit tough that's my answer to that uh, thank you pleasure is mine yes yes one more question we take from the last row and we will come to here come here hi good evening good evening uh, i just wanted to ask like uh, despite knowing the fact that uh, we are moving towards a generation where it's more ai generated and we are more dependent on technology uh -huh. how would this uh, bring a change in the field of journalism and media mass media and communication yeah and how we can uh, will it impact like uh, humans uh this uh, as we know that there are more ai generated reporters and journalists now appearing yeah. so how will this create an impact on us humans who have like you know pursuing journalism and mass media and communication in the future i think in future suppose suppose a politician in a country a very very important politician in a country dies suppose he passes away okay now what's opportunity for a media what's what opportunity a media has a media or one news anchor say it bbc or it is cnn or it is any tv in india or it is republic in india any channel has only one way the anchor will be presenting the news in the same tone correct depends on the political orientation of the news channel the tone may vary but everybody who is listening to the channel will only listening to that particular tone of the anchor or style of presentation by the anchor correct on the go the same news in the same country say in one particular state or in one particular region or even in one particular residents association or like a community of people say that particular place is having more followers of this person the news presenter an ai presenter may be presenting the news in a more emotional melodramatic manner in that particular region but the same news at the same time may be presented in a less emotional manner to a place 30 miles away from that other place in a very unemotional manner because there are less supporters for that person are you getting the point 
So this kind of dynamism will be possible in journalism on the go. And one more point, in future, the media may be taking live feeds from social media about how people are responding to a particular issue, and the media may be changing their stance instantly based on the feeds they are getting from social media. So precisely, AI or technology will be revolutionizing the media very, very soon. And even now, in many times, we are getting a deceptive picture, a distorted picture of some news based on the orientation of media, right? This distortion may go up on the go. So what is the response to that? In response to that, there will be more companies, more website comes as fact-checking websites. And we as human beings should apply our critical thinking more before we get a news from a media or before we internalize news from media. So that is a change which we should adopt. Got it. So it's going to change drastically and we need to change drastically in the way we are approaching media. Hope I answered. Thank you. If the microphone can come here. Yeah, I think to him first. And we'll come there. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I like to have an understanding when we say my children want to go for a computer science course huh. in university. So whether the AI machine learning comes in the initial stage or it comes in the fourth year or when the That's branches starts. Mm. So because we have a general understanding, I'm a commerce background guy. Mm. So for me, computer science, my son say I want to go for this. So I, I think which side you will go, yeah. whether it will start from the first year itself or yeah. it will go third year, fourth year, fifth year. Yeah. You know? So yeah. just that visibility. I will just help. present the fact at this point Thank of you. time. There are colleges or universities coming up with specialized undergraduate courses like in BC AI or BTEC AI or BTEC Robotics, BTEC Data Science kind of courses. These courses are already there. But in many of the colleges or universities, these courses are not being taught by experts. Because there are very less experts in this field around. And they would be working with some of the corporates. And in many of the universities or colleges, what happens is like the people who used to teach computer science learn AI from the textbooks and teach people. Except the top colleges. Okay? So, my suggestion is, and the second problem is, AI is one derivative of computer science, right? And the child doesn't know or that clear about whether they are going to pursue the same thing continuously. It may be like then going for MBBS, directly go to uh, Bachelor of Cardiology or Bachelor of Neurology. So the ideal track would be the ideal. Do your course in computer science or in electronics or in electronics Parallel to that, maybe from year two or three, you don't need to wait until you complete, the child complete the course, can take a parallel course from a different college or a digital program to get certified in AI or data science or any other or machine learning kind of that. So by what happens there, the child get the basics of computer science and also, they understand what is happening in the field of this. So after the engineering, if they want to do a specialization in that, they can. Or even during the last year, if they want to do a specific diploma course in that, that is also possible. That would be the ideal pathway. Exception is, if we are very good and passionate about AI or robotics, exception. And to identify a college where teachers are good in that. And good placement track record is there. Go for that. That's how we want to treat that question. Hope answer. Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, good evening and uh, thanks for the, the guidance so far. Uh, I have two questions. One is for the, the you told that investment banker, there will be huge opportunity and the earnings will be high as per your slide, which I, I can see. But don't you think that the investor banker job will be replaced by AI? Now itself, you can see the, the, the Elgro and auto AIs are coming, which are choosing the stocks and everything. Yeah, yeah. So what will be the role you are seeing that that yeah. investor banker will be doing? Yeah. The second question? And the second question, the same, um, same slide I've seen that you told that BTEC plus MBA will be a the good opportunity. Uh -huh. So I, I just would like to understand more Why? details that Why? what kind of opportunities. Yeah. Let me take the first question first. I would say... For the people who are number and commerce lovers, on a very, very generic case scenario, that is one field which is getting highly automated. Which is getting highly automated. It's simply because computers understand numbers in a good manner than they understand scenarios. And commerce or banking is one area where number dominates scenarios. So naturally, that is one field which is getting quickly automated. That's my first point. Second point, I don't have a point that investment banking or wealth management field is going to be insulated from computerization. Not at all. That will be attacked. That will be intervened. That will be encroached for sure. But number three, but that is one field better than many other fields in the commerce area where the experts can make use of the data which has been provided by the AI softwares to convince people to invest in. So there the role of investment banker wouldn't be just a number guy, but also be a guy who is understanding the scenario of the person who is investing, interest of the person who is investing, aligning the vision of the person who is investing, and then ask the person to invest. So that level of a human development, the, the, the investment banker should be having. That's why people always say, the only way to stay relevant during the time of mechanization is be maximum human. Because you cannot compete with a machine by being more mechanical. You cannot compete with a computer by being better in numbers. You can compete mechanization or stay relevant during mechanization only by being more human. So an investment or wealth ban manager who is more human understands the scenario and the mindset of the investor better and using the AI tools directing the investment in a better manner will stay, may stay relevant than many other professions for commerce lovers. And now, taking why BTEC and MBA? It's because ma MBA is into management, right? So it is good if you, it is good and easy for you to manage if you understand what you are managing. So if you are becoming the manager in a computer company, in an IT company, it is good and you can do things better if you understand the language of computer science or the language of technology. Because you understand the thing. If you, it's simple like this. In media, people who are reporting law-related cases, media prefer to take people who have an LLB and journalism degree because they understand law and they understand journalism. Similar like that in media, people recruit the people who are having a business background or business degree and a journalism degree to report or to develop business features because they understand both. In the similar manner, to lead companies in technology, what I have seen is People who are into engineering and MBA can do a better job. And there is also another chance. If you want to be a manager in a technology company, again my suggestion is, one more point I want to add on, you don't need to do MBA immediately after your undergraduation. Do undergraduation 
because most of the companies are recruiting the man for management positions not from externally like a lateral entry but mostly internally like a promotion kind of stuff so complete your undergraduation start working in a company maybe after a couple of years either distance or by in person you can take leave for an year and go somewhere and do an mba come back and you can work in the same company in a better manner so that would be the right track to pursue a management course because to manage something experience would be very important that's why in uk if you see all the top universities accept application only with a basic of 3 years of work experience top colleges so that is also a track to follow that's my answer thank you very much good evening and, sir yeah good evening. i got four doubts with me four doubts yeah wow so my first doubt is i would love to pursue mechanical engineering okay is it that future proof and my second doubt is first question first answer okay. so because you have four right my memory is not that good so i would say mechanical engineering as a career opportunity for a machine tech lover will be a good opportunity to pursue no doubt but still that will be impacted by technology and all that is fine but if you are passionate about and you learn from the right place you will still be relevant Th that will be there yeah my second question is do we need to have a high level of knowledge in mathematics to pursue mechanical engineering as we all believe uh i would say then see i would say the fundamentals of maths and science is required to pursue most of the careers that is number 1 okay number 2 because see i studied uh, management after my law one course one paper in management i totally ignored the statistics but that is one thing which i use in my day to day life now to lead my company but i didn't even open my statistics textbook when my, in my mba college i just follow some notes learned it and implemented it but now every day for my living i am using making use of statistics or the concepts so the point is understanding of math and science would be very important to pursue almost everything in career okay coming to mechanical engineering i would say than the concepts or numbers in mathematics see mathematics is kind of a thinking process right so than numbers how i understand maths or science is kind of a thinking process that ashraf sir would be better to talk about that being a maths teacher but for me maths is not just numbers but it is a process of thinking so that process of thinking would be very very important in any of the engineering careers including this so the point i'm trying to make is so putting it into perspective even if you are scoring less in maths now or understanding maths or numbers less now but if you have an approach towards mathematical or, or orientation towards mathematics and love towards mathematics you can still go way forward well third question uh, i am a student currently in 11th okay. i took physics chemistry math along okay. with engineering graphics okay so is there a future proof career that i can pursue out of engineering graphics as well uh, my problem with that world future proof is nobody can say which is future proof because after 2 years a small company coming up with an innovation may torpedo an entire career opportunity so the future proof is kind of a dangerous world to say yes or no okay but your combination is good especially i would say equal to maths you need to be very good in physics also if you are going to work with machines so focus those two subjects and go deeper into that fourth question now which part of the world is better for pursuing mechanical engineering is it germany the states or any place in europe that again totally depends on the economic condition of the country and the priority of the country after maybe you are into 11th right so you will be searching for a job only after minimum of 6 years correct so at that point of time what would be the priority of the country would be the question there so you can search about that i think maybe 3 years after yeah uh, good evening sir i have a small doubt yeah. uh, are there geographical limitations in medical field uh mm, i would say to a small extent because after completing medicine go into some other country you will have to go through a qualifying examination in that country in many of the countries but if you learn medicine well and good you will easily go through that 
if you learn medicine well and good you can go through that okay so whether it is having geographical limitation to an extent yes but overcoming that is possible That's thank you yeah so. good university or good course that's a very interesting question so i would say ideal case is good course in a good university that's a ideal case okay but i would say let me put it in three points number one if you are very clear about a particular course that this is the course which i want to go for and that course is having a good ecosystem and good set of teachers in that particular university even though the university is totally ranked less if that particular department is good you can choose that i hope that part is clear second part because for an example for an example the university which i studied is cardiff in the uk so in cardiff university four departments are very top medical school is very top uh, media school is very top business school is very top international study school is very top engineering is not that top but university is ranked good one of the 20 22 universities in the result group so in that particular university if i want to study engineering or if i want to study humanities that may not be a right decision even though the university is good because the department is not strong it may not be able to create a good ecosystem for me to go to a good country i mean good post because the university because of the brand charges me more and expect more from me whereas the department is not that good so for the money i pay for the time i spend for the rigor i spend there it may not be worth enough to pursue so if you are very clear about a case even if university is brand is slightly less but that particular department is having a very good ecosystem very good teachers and very good brand and the course is good that there i mean that is a good choice but uh, this is a specific answer but the generic case is and university become a good university when in total all the departments are better and good so naturally a good university would be mostly having good courses also inside that's a generic case but if not that in the case go with the go to a course even if the university is less only if that course is creating a good ecosystem around how about answer take i think we'll take two more questions because time is our oh, lot of hands yeah good evening take sir it. yeah sir i've seen that most colleges in india offer a btech course but most colleges here offer a bsc in engineering so what's the difference between the two like if one person does bsc in uh, engineering and if another person does btech in engineering will the opportunities and the pay be the same for both of them and will both of them be counted as engineers or not see there are the pointers like you know how exactly the particular course is structured because because so i would say in terms of a technology company at this point of time most of the technology companies are not counting much whether you are a btech graduate or a be graduate or a bsc graduate that particular counting is very less what do they count now is mostly whether you know that particular job or not whether you do have the particular qualification is important but at the same time whether you do have the particular skill to execute that function or not so whichever the title is if you can understand the thing better know the earn the skill and be meticulous in execution the companies will less consider whether it is a bsc or it is btech that's what the point is clear that is the case in technology that may not be the case in everything because why in technology that is the case because technology it is easy to understand whether you know the job or not so the the recruitment is easier for the companies 
It is very tough to understand a humanities graduate's capacity when comparing with the easiness to understand an engineer's capacity. Got it. Yeah. We we'll take one more question. From you. Yeah. Generally speaking, how do we figure out the career path that we choose right now stays relevant in the next 20 or maybe even 30 years? Come again once more. Generally speaking, the career path that I choose right now, how do you figure out if it's going to stay relevant in the next 20 or 30 years? Your career years? path which you choose right now? Yeah. The, the, the visual arts one. Mm. No, that, that's a specific no, Not question. just visual arts. Any career path that I choose right now, how do you figure out if it's going to stay relevant? Okay. Down the line? So that point is like, you know, what you can do is you can choose a particular career path which is relevant, which, is, which seems to be relevant according to the trend and data at this point of time. Only in that angle, you can choose a career pathway today. But at the same time, any person who is choosing any career pathway now should be very clear that this particular career pathway may be washed out or changed drastically at any point of time. So we should be open to relearn things and learn new things anytime. If you ask me, which is the most important skill required in the 21st century skill, 21st century, 21st century, I would say the skill to learn. Because learning itself is a skill, right? So if you acquire the skill to learn, naturally on the go, even if the career trajectory pathway is having a lot of changes on the go, you will be able to upskill yourself according to that. And second, if you are into something which you love the best, you will put an extra energy to learn more. So continuous learning would be required in any career pathway. And now we can take a decision only based on what the current trend says, which may change on the go where the learning becomes important. Got it? Stop the questions? Yeah. We end the question. I think because of time, we end the questions now. I will show you one more thing. Yeah. I will show you one more thing. Present, please. I will show you a CV. Identify whose CV it is. Whose profile is it? Say louder if you identify. Huh? Name is here. This is the CV of Bill Gates when he was at Howard University. And see the profile of and how. You know which course Bill Gates was doing in Harvard? Not computer science. Which course? Bill Gates was doing Bachelor of Law at Harvard. And he dropped out. But the problem, the point is he didn't drop out to be a dropout. He dropped out after getting a very considerable project from a larger company at that time to execute. But many times our problem is like Bill Gates is a dropout, so I also want to be a dropout. What you want to do after being a dropout? That I will find out after being dropout. <laughs> so that may not be the right case. Okay. So this is Bill Gates' CV, right? So I would say to get into a top college now, or even after getting, even after getting into a college, Creating a very comprehensive profile matters a lot because not only colleges now. If you go to any Ivy League or Russell Group colleges, your total profile matters. At the same time, even when you are a college student, the companies will not recruit you just because of your degree. They will see your total profile, what you have done throughout your education. I will show you the profiles of a couple of students whose profiles inspired me a lot or influenced me a lot. And these students were part of Lifeology's Global Fellowship Program and Lifeology's Youth Ambassador Program. These all are school students who are in 9, 10, 11, 12 grades. This is one student from Bangalore who is extremely clear about she wants to become an oncologist, not only a doctor, an oncologist. 
and she is already the lead of the student chapter of oncology society in the city and this is a linkedin profile not facebook or insta profile and see the number of activities she is involved with this is another girl in a school in uae and she started her own company as a platform where a community for gen z community for her own kind of generation a social media community and she would be applying to a university with this profile when her business school when she is applying to a business school for undergraduate in business with this and we apply without this who will get better qualified better who will get the better chance to get in this is another guy from odisha see the number of activities he is involved see you would also be involving in many of these activities but we don't count it's all about counting everything what we have done and putting into a profile and giving it a meaning so that people value it you guys and girls might have gone through multiple things by now right but put it in your profile so there you need you sometimes you need a support from your teacher or internal career counselor or an external career coach who can help you to create your profile another girl she was a research mentee with harvard university for two months and she was with lifeology and she was with many other organizations as well and she even started a particular organization called let's defeat bullying a writer she wants to be a writer already proclaimed as a writer and have this much of experience in content writing as well started his own company already a tedx speaker and he's done multiple things in life see see these are some of the things which you should do during your school days or after your school during your college days you need to be pretty clear about your career family which you are going to Spec medicine may be a career family engineering may be a career family but within engineering there are different segments to reach each segment there are different pathways you have to create a navigation strategy to be there create a study plan country plan course plan university plan 21st century skills you need to take up internship work experience voluntary experience entrepreneurship experience when i say entrepreneurship i will give you an example i mean uh, that i will keep for later innovation competition summer programs eco curricular activities getting attached to professionals getting attached to entrepreneurs doing shadowing with people interaction with professionals you can visit multiple universities and see what is happening over there exam planning exam attendance university college application filling of application form interview attending departure it's a total thing you know because doing such a comprehensive planning for two years minimum when i say two years because you are already into 11th you need to start even early so this kind of a thing would be very important for creating a profile like this let me tell you two case studies i will wind up with that lights yeah i was in china in 2019 end in shanghai early in india during the 2020 initial days a person who is coming from china was having 41 days quarantine i think many times here as well right at least in dubai it was and i escaped from that just by two days because people who reach from china after two days which i reached had to go for quarantine for 41 days i was in china in shanghai and before that i was in beijing because china is one country where career planning is considered in a very very comprehensive manner so i wanted to know how things are happening there i met a guy in shanghai a student of grade 12 like many of you and when i met him he was from shanghai public school so when i met him he was holding two offer letters one from stanford and one from mit you know what he did he was pretty he got a coach he got a mentor when he was grade 
and he was very clear and the mentor was very clear that this guy is not going to get into the Ivy Leagues or into Stanford only with the academic prowess. This guy was exceptionally good in playing bridge and good in maths too. So what they did, is, I mean in computer as well, not exceptional but fine. So he created an, a platform based on machine learning predicting the outcome of bridge games and presented it to the national innovation platform or something and got, it, got an award. Featuring that, he worked more on the platform and he put an application to Stanford and MIT, not by presenting his academic records, but talking more about this platform, what he created. And this kind of you know, academic purpose writing is, or the statement of purpose kind of document is, I will be becoming an entrepreneur in future by creating or by ex extending this platform into a larger manner, if I get an opportunity to study there. His profile goes there, another guy's profile goes there, who would naturally get an opportunity. Second girl, I met in Saudi, she is from Saudi, she got an opportunity to do undergraduation in humanities course in Harvard University. You know how? She started an NGO specifically related to one aspect of women. I don't want to say what aspect because you Google and find and you say that that's a drama created for admission into a university. One aspect of women. That particular NGO, and it was mentored by or this idea was given to her by a mentor who was preparing her for university admissions. And this NGO got pretty well established and she was in college and she was supported by her family to get this NGO established. And got covered by a couple of media houses about her activities into that particular field. And the application to the university went on with the profile where everything related to the NGO activities is perfectly explained. And her statement of purpose is, I will be doing more of these kind of things in my country if I get graduated from your college. Accept it. So that means career needs better early planning. So let's close here. The world is going to be exciting, I would say, not challenging, exciting. But we have to travel an extra mile. For that, we need to plan deeper by overcoming our natural laziness, by understanding passion, personality, and opportunities around. And this has to be done early because a comprehensive profile makes a lot of sense. Even if college, school, very important, even when you go to your college, create a profile like this. In future, recruitments will not be based on one aptitude test or a five minutes interview. It will be mostly based on a total comprehensive profile you create. All the very best. Thank you very much. Yeah, good evening. My first request to please continue till the word of thanks. And when we planned a career guidance, it was supposed to be something innovative and something beneficial, something futuristic. Are you benefited by the, did you, ben are you benefited or not? Yes. So, you know, we have time for everything. We spend a lot of time for movie three hours. And Mr. Praveen is traveled all the way from Trivandrum to Bahrain and then here. Maybe he maybe spent around eight, nine hours to reach here. And our team brilliant maybe worked behind this program for almost two to three days. A team is working here. But this was absolutely free. You are invested only you were two of us. But how many of parents are utilizing this type of platform? 
we want to send our children to the top universities. Top colleges, we want to see our children flying high. Even I invited, I think, huge number of students and parents. This is the awareness. We think that we go to the X college or Y college, we do that course and we will be in the top profile. The time is changed. So, these type of programs, when it comes to you, my humble request is to attend. Something will be useful for you. And as I told you, Vassar is shown you the profile of the children who have LinkedIn profile. How many of you have a good LinkedIn profile, students? How many of you have a good LinkedIn profile? None of you. I am having a LinkedIn profile connected by huge number of followers and connected by many students. There are children in Doha who used to come and like, comment to every my post in Doha who are preparing for Ivy League universities who already scored SAT score 1550, 1570. So you are going to compete with these type of children. So when we provide you opportunities to know, they also, see I know, I myself has 130 students in our integrated program which is going to be here. Yes or no? How many of you attended that one? See, very few I can see here. The rest of the people, they are not aware, they are not bothered. At the end, when they get less, they will be coming and trying to sit on the top of the institution or school or teachers. The whole blame will be going to the blame game. So it is time to come up with effort. It is time to change ourselves. So definitely, those who have attended here today, tomorrow onwards, I think parents will not be having a tough time to stop them from playing game or computer or mobile addiction. Definitely try to create a good LinkedIn profile, not Facebook account, Instagram account. How many of you have Instagram account? How many of you have Instagram account? Almost everybody will be having Instagram account. Facebook account may be not there now, and the trend is Instagram. So try to visit LinkedIn profile even I'm utilizing the LinkedIn profile very effectively for recruiting qualified and quality teachers. So if I get a CV for a teacher, first I'll go and look his LinkedIn, which all company he's worked, which all MNCC worked, which all schools they worked. If that schools and this all are in the top profile, then only we will look into that CV. If he's not having a LinkedIn profile, we never go for that profile because he's not updated in the market. So, brilliant, we are here. So it's a social activity for us. We are not gaining anything. So we are not gaining anything. But it is a responsibility when we run a responsible organization in Doha to give awareness to the students and guide the parents to reach the right career as much as possible. So my, I'll take this opportunity to thank Mr. Praveen, we are closely associated with almost, I think, four years now. Uh, we have conducted some other events also in Doha through online, but I wanted to give in physically here. That is the reason why, instead of online, I brought, I asked him to come and give a good one to the students and the parents. Hope in future, I think Praveen can give multiple sessions in different uh, topics how to prepare the children for the future and how to train the teachers to train the children better. And this all are the topic where his areas are there. I think I request the ma'am to utilize this to give training for our teachers also in future when he visit uh, Doha. Okay, having said all these things, thank you very much for being with us. So in future also, we will try to conduct similar events which will be beneficial for you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashraf, sir.
Thank you very much, Praveen, sir. You have motivated us all by sharing your expertise and knowledge in every way possible. And I'm sure all the parents here are also motivated to support and help their children to be like you. Moreover, I also thank you for making us understand what is the future of work and the most three important terms, that is the PAO, passion, aptitude, and opportunities, which is very, very important, and it has to go in line for a better and a particular career. Thank you very much, sir. I now call upon the director of Brilliant Group of Institution, Ashraf sir, and ma'am, to present the memento to the guest speaker of today, Mr. Praveen Parmeshwar. So could you please come forward to receive the memento? I request all the brilliant group of teachers to come forward. Good morning. What's all this? Your results. Congratulations to all. I'm confident you'll all achieve your goals. So young man, what are your aspirations? I want to do robotics, ideally from the best institute in the US. And you young lady? Sir, I love kids and I would love to learn pediatrics. I feel Boston is the best place for that. Sumit, what about you? Back home to India for medicine. Good. I'm sure you'll all achieve your aspirations, be it in India or anywhere. Keep in mind, your first challenge is the entrance, whether it's IIT, JAI, SAT or NEET. You have to learn from the masters. Brilliant Qatar is the passport to your success. We undertake coaching for regular and repeat batches and tuition for board examinations. Brilliant Education Center, Doha, Qatar. Good morning. What's all this? Your results. Congratulations to all. I'm confident you'll all achieve your goals. So young man, what are your aspirations? I want to do robotics, ideally from the best institute in the US. And you young lady? Sir, I love kids and I would love to learn pediatrics. I feel Boston is the best place for that. Sumit, what about you? Back home to India for medicine. Good. I'm sure you'll all achieve your aspirations, be it in India or anywhere. Keep in mind, your first challenge is the entrance, whether it's IIT, JAI, SAT or NEET. You have to learn from the masters. Brilliant Qatar is the passport to your success. We undertake coaching for regular and repeat batches and tuition for board examinations. Brilliant Education Center,